tainted Lazarus. Would you believe it? <laughs> Would you believe it? You don't believe it, do you? Check it out. Guess what? Tainted Lazarus. What the heck? Between life and death. Flip. Three HP, two boots, and two swords. I don't know how this character works, but we're going to figure it out, okay? You've got the Omrecker sigil in the bottom right. It has a six-room charge. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, you got you you flip from light side to dark side. Okay. Dark side I'm I mean that's pretty sizable damage, no question. This character sucks. He's the worst character. I hate this character. He's bad. Okay, that's fun. That's cool. Good, glad to hear it. <laughs> back back to tainted Jacob grinding it is. So the items do not carry over. That's what I'm realizing here. So I mean, okay, here's, I'm, I'm, I'm making a mistake already because I'm trying to, like, game the system instead of just playing the game. Like, at the end of the day, if you can just dodge, you're going to solve, like, a lot of problems, right? Oh, you change every room. Oh, now I, I was like, we'll just build one character and then not worry about it. How foolish I was. Okay. Um... Okay, well, it's very simple. We'll just get Mom's Knife as one character, and then Brimstone as the other, and then easy win, forehead. Have you noticed how cursed the, the streamer runs of uh, Jacob and Esau have been? Simvicta told me today he had a, a run as Jacob and Esau where he fought Delirium, and the Delirium fight alone was an hour long. I was like, I, I didn't think that... It was possible to have a worse Jacob and Esau run than we did against Delirium, where the run was 90 minutes long, and then um, about 45 minutes of that was on the void. But like an hour of of trying to fight specifically just that boss, I would I might uninstall, quite frankly. Oh, it depends why. Yeah, was it was it Orbital Nod Leaf or was it was it constant activity? There's there's a difference. <laughs> New chib emote, by the way. Was that what is that like a baby baby cow? That's a cute, it's a cute item. Um, so I don't. I think I want to flip, and then take this as you. Maybe maybe you can hold real HP. You can. Okay. <laughs> what this character's supposed to be hard? <laughs> Easy. Okay, don't throw any HP away. Don't throw any HP away. Take me down to the next floor, and we're going to try to finesse some deals with the angel. I, I see some people saying, hey, it's not, um, you know, it, it's Taintub, uh, Taintub? It's Jacob and Esau, but worse. I don't know, man. Like, the thing is, like, the problem with... Jacob and Esau is not the division of items. The problem is trying to dodge with two individuals in a game that, like, if we're being honest, was just designed to dodge with one. Uh, so the fact that at least you're only playing as one character is kind of... Uh, it's kind of pogged, if I dare say so myself. But certainly, the deciding what item goes to who is kind of is a little touchy. It's definitely also the division of items. Well, I wouldn't know because I always go to the alt path because I'm not scared. Uh, and as a result of not being scared, I get two items anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me. But if you're like the average Isaac player, or um, or worse, I suppose, um, then you, uh, I, I could understand how you would find yourself in times of trouble. Mother Mary, comfort me. Now that your tweet's viral, have you gotten any requests to promote Galaxy Lights or that vibrator with the suction cup on the on the top of it? For whatever reason. Um, I, I have not. I've heard, and like, it's just insane to me, but I have heard that um, the rate that you get for advertising 
those galaxy lights is literally $50 per viral tweet, which is so unbelievably, like, it's so low, I can't even describe it. Like, I, I can look at the analytics for that Thanos tweet. I'm pretty sure it has, um, at this point, it's got 18,000 likes. It's probably been seen by 500,000 people. So literally, you're paying like 0.1 cent per view, which is like unfathomably, it's just an insult. Um, so I'm not going to sell you out for 50 bucks. If somebody would like to pay, maybe, shall we say, 2,500, then we might start to think about it. But but 50 bucks for a galaxy light? No, I don't I don't believe that that will be happening. I I will maintain my integrity in the face of uh, in the face of that offer. Dude, honestly, I'm just going down to the next floor. We don't even want to see it because we're getting deals with the angel in the future. I don't want to see it. That being said, I'm, I, I think it's one of those like Ouroboros things where like one of the reasons that they pay so little for the advertisement is because the, the advertisement doesn't work at all. So they can't afford to pay more for the advertisement. Something like that. <laughs> I'm curious what the light is. It's just like it's it's a lamp that projects like stars onto your ceiling, basically. And then there's another one that's like, you won't believe uh, what you get up to when you got this lamp, and this the, the lamp looks like a, a sunset. And then there's like, um, I think there's another one that's like, put your favorite album cover in glass. And it's like a 3D glass sculpture of, you know, Goblin by Tyler, the creator. Have you ever bought something based on a TV commercial? Um, definitely, like, as a child, there's no question. I mean, when you're a kid, like, when you see an ad for something, like, it, it just, it hits a part of your brain that, like, you have no rational protection against until you're an adult, right? Like, as a kid, I was, I mean... Every time I saw the Crossfire commercial, they made it seem like the best game of all time. I didn't get to play it as an adult until, um, or until I was an adult, I should say. It was probably like in, in university, and it's like the game just kind of sucks. <laughs> it's like like messy pong, but uh, the the ad was incredible. And I mean cereals. You know what? The other one that that got me for sure was the board game Thirteen Dead End Drive. I remember having like such hype for Thirteen Dead End Drive. Because it looks so cool in the ad, like there's an old man walking and then he steps on like a pressure plate in front of the grandfather clock and the clock like spins around and sucks him into the wall. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. Then when you play it yourself, like 13 Dead End Drive was like, it was okay, but it was one of those games that had like absurd setup time. And then it was kind of like Mousetrap where the traps never went off properly. So, you know, like my mom's character would step on the pressure plate and then I'd push the button uh, but like it wouldn't actually suck the the board game piece like away so you just had to like manually remove it from the board and you're like okay well I kind of bought it because there was a cool 3d ad of your soul getting snatched but I guess instead just uh, you, you take damage you take two damage yeah this is tainted Lazarus right now you know what was a sick game was um don't break the ice. The game with the plastic ice cubes and then you got the little hammer and it's like horizontal Jenga. That game was sick, man. You ever play Kerplunk? There's a, actually, now that I think about it, there's a lot of great kids board games. Kerplunk is the game with the marbles in a tube and then you get like the, the straw, or not straws, but like little plastic... Uh, Spikes that you like pull out of the sticks is a much better word. Thank you little plastic sticks You pull out to try to like make as few marbles drop as possible Great game and then you ever play um, oh, I, I think this might be like a Canadian game. It's called rebound But it, it basically 
you had like little ball bearings with plastic edges on them. And then the board was like a long path and then elastic bands that made like ricochet corners. It was like like micro shuffleboard, but you had to flick the rebound things and bounce them off the elastic bands. Oh man. That was that was a great game. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Yeah, kind of like cool shuffleboard or the kids shuffleboard. Hungry Hungry Hippos. Hungry Hungry Hippos is okay, but like I don't I don't love uh, a game that has like literally no strategy. Like you literally are like just mashing. And then sometimes like the least satisfying feeling of all time is when the hippo gets like a ball stuck in the corner of their mouth and then the, it won't like open and close properly for five seconds. Your cousin's just mashing and gobbling up the balls like... A lot of those games are like, you know... The, the more physics driven that they were, the less likely that they were actually going to work well. But there's some classic physics-driven board games for kids. We got so lucky. Yes, please. I mean, here, here's what I'm thinking, okay? Let's, let's try to get the items split somewhat evenly. So I'm going to put this on you now. And I'm going to blow you up. Something fierce. Let's see if this works, man. Kind of. Let's try to get the items split somewhat evenly. Trouble was pretty good. You know, okay, so Trouble was the one that in the center of the board, you had like the, the plastic dome that you pushed on to roll the dice, right? That was pretty fun. Um, I'm trying to think of what the, uh, the, the other... Oh, I was thinking of Frustration. You ever do Frustration? It was the one where like you had to put the shapes in the right spot. There were like... Probably 36 shapes you had to put in the right spot. Uh, and if you took too long, like, because the board would go tick, 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 tick. Oh, perfection! Yeah, that's perfection, not uh, not frustration. Sorry. And you'd, you'd be, and the board would, like, get, it start at the bottom and then it would rise and it would go tick, 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 tick. And you're like, ah, where's the, where's the, the, the half moon? Where do I put the half moon? Tick, 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 tick. And if you didn't put it in in time, it would, uh, it would explode on you and like pop all the pieces out like Kazumaru cheese. That's right, in the square hole. That was a great game. Thank God you started streaming. I can only focus when you play Isaac. Dude, you know what? Feel free to take the Thanos meme and just replace the, the thumb infinity stone with new Isaac episode. That I, I give you my permission. Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, that is the maggot cheese. There were a lot of games as a kid I was really bad at, dude. Like, um, I'm horrible at operation. I, even as a child, like, I, I don't think I have, like, a neurological problem to be wary about. But as a child, even, I had, like, kind of shaky, uneven hands. Like, I would never be a good barber. So operation is like a disaster for me. And then also, um, that game where you gotta like, it's similar to operation, but you get like a metal hoop and you have to run it uh, over a metal rod so that it never touches the rod or it goes Aah! That one as well, never good. And plus I'm impatient too. I like doing is slow. I'm like, that's for the birds, man. No, thank you. That game is on Neopets now. <laughs> Pog? I don't really know what Neopets is, honestly. It's like online Tamagotchi meets Pokemon, right? That was one that was just... I'm not going to say it was after my time, but I think just like my school never got into it.
My wife just looked at the title of the stream and chortled. The balding of Isaac, because he's bald. She's She's got it. Let her know she's got it 100% correct. The joke has been solved. The joke explainer has logged on. And honestly, she, she gets the subtext as well. You know what? I'm... Oh, I didn't mean to switch. I didn't mean to... I meant to put down the TNT, dude. Okay, put down the TNT. Oh, instead of binding. See, Jay, you get it now. Joe, step into the plate. Joe, random. The best way to keep the batter off a step is to pound him hard inside. <laughs> have you, have you, have you encountered that uh, during the show, Jay? I forget the exact, li uh, not lyric, but the line that the the co the commentary says. But he's like, if you want to keep this batter off balance, you got to keep pounding him low and inside. And I'm like, come on, man, come on, you know what you were saying. When you do it, that's not a baseball line. What are your thoughts on the movie The Prestige? Uh, great movie. When I uh, was in university, it was uh, maybe my second year of university, both The Prestige and The Illusionist came out. I trusted the critics at the time. Who said the prestige is fun, but the the movie for like real mature cinema goers is The Illusionist. I went to see The Illusionist in theaters. This this birthed like a, a an evergreen meme, um, where I talked about how like I had to pee for the entire second half of the movie, but they just kept revealing like twist after twist, and I, my bladder was like on the verge of exploding. But the end of the movie is like Paul Giamatti slowly piecing together like everything that happened and he just keeps like having this this dumbstruck face of realization while the camera spins around him just going ha! <laughs> delightful like over and over and i was just dying in my seat like please paul i got <laughs> i'm gonna die dude i'm gonna my bladder's gonna explode man um but anyway only saw The Illusionist, or sorry, The Prestige, many years later. Um, and honestly, uh, definitely feel like The Prestige is a better movie. But they are both, uh, they're both at least good. The Prestige probably takes it a level beyond that for me. They're both fun movies, no doubt about that. What are your thoughts on Mortal Kombat 2021? My thoughts are like I wanna I'm angry at HBO for the fact that like I, I had to ask chat how to watch it and they're like, oh just watch it on HBO Max. And then I had to ask chat how you watch HBO Max in Canada, and Canadians were like, oh, it doesn't exist. So like the only way this is scary, but the only way that I think you can watch. Mortal Kombat 2021 in Canada right now is to pay $25 for a rental digitally and uh, there's just absolutely no way that's going to happen. I think we swap. Grab this. Grab that. We have not been to our item room yet either. Okay. I'm not scared, because check this out. <laughs> Genius. Okay, you know, just to not have to walk through some rooms with spikes, I'm willing to do this. And then let's just see. Let's just see what we get. Okay, fair enough. Shot speed down. Not what I was hoping for. Not what I was hoping for. I'm in Canada. I paid 25 bucks to watch it on Amazon Prime. I had fun, but I don't recommend it. I I hear you. I mean, it's just like this a lot, man. Like I don't mind paying. Like I'll level with you. You can call me like the the element that's ruining the cinema industry if you want. I'm probably gonna pay 30 bucks to watch Black Widow on Disney Plus. It looks 
sorry, I almost choked on my words. Uh, the premise didn't really interest me that much. That much when I watched the trailer, I was like, you know what? The trailer's pretty pogged. You got me. And I'll watch it with Kate. So it's like 15-15, right? Mortal Kombat, she is not going to watch um, with me. So I am not going to uh, pay $25 just to watch it myself. Like, that's just a, an extreme... Basically flushing the money down the toilet. Like, that's, that's a movie I'd probably just look at my phone the entire time. So I, I really need to wait for that one to come out on a service I already pay for, or alternatively, like, at least not be $25. Either one <laughs> would, would interest me, I think. Donkey Dunk. Oh, yeah, and I'm, that's the other thing is, like, I'm, I'm kind of like a captive audience right now. We're not going to be able to go to the movie theater for, like, a long time. Because uh, of the baby, right? So, it's a lot easier to get me to pay 30 bucks to see, like, a prestige movie at home. Not the prestige. That one I could probably see for free now. But I'll pay, uh, I'll pay a little extra for the privilege. But it's got to be the right thing. It's got to be the right time. Did you see the Oscars? I did not. Um, I was going to make it. This was before my viral tweet last night. I was going to make. Um, I was going to make a tweet about stop asking me if I'm watching the Oscars. I only saw three movies in 2020. But then I was like, I don't. I think it's going to take away from the virality of my my banger Thanos tweet. So I just uh, I opted out instead. Okay, we we got a we got a game plan here. Like I have literally no opinion on I lived <laughs> on what happened in the Oscars this year, except I saw uh, Daniel Kaluuya win. Excuse me, my justice card? Uh, my justice card? I saw Daniel Kaluuya say, um, life's amazing. My mom and my dad met. They had sex, and here I am. And then I, I saw a, just an absolutely terrible interview with him afterwards. Where the reporter was like, so, wow, you really, um, you really went for it there on stage with the, uh, <laughs> Funny comment, destined to live in Oscar history, right? And I, he was just, you know, kind of like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I think it's kind of like common knowledge that all of our parents had intercourse. It was, uh, it was just a weird energy interview. Then I did see one person reply to the tweet that showed the interview. And um, their, their tweet was like, you know, I watched this show with my kids and now they're asking me all sorts of <laughs> uncomfortable questions. <laughs> okay, sorry. Like, bro, I mean, here's the question. Why are you watching the Oscars like with a young child? They're going to be bored out of their skull, you know? Well, did, did your kids see Nomadland? I doubt it. They're not going to appreciate its mature themes and, you know, its meditations on what it means to be uh, a member of uh, American society at the fringes of economic survival. You know, they're they're eight years old. You don't need to watch the Oscars with your with your second grader. I watched the Oscars with my son, aged five, and he said, "Father." I hope Anthony Hopkins, I hope Sir Anthony Hopkins wins Best Actor. Did you know his portrayal as Hannibal Lecter is the shortest amount of screen time in a movie in history that went on to win Best Supporting Actor? I just love Sir Anthony Hopkins. Anyway, that's all I got. <laughs> I can't even tell actors apart. You can you can tell Anthony Hopkins apart. He's old. 
and he looks like Hannibal Lecter. No, 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 no. This is scary. Yeah, he's an old guy. Wait, I had something to say, but I forgot it. I don't remember it now. Whatever, moving on. <laughs> Couldn't have been that important. <laughs> don't hit me, dude. I'm like, what button do you press? What button do you press? Anyway, the Oscars. How about that? Love to see him. Love to see him. I did see... I love when the movie that I've seen wins an award. Uh, Soul won Best Animated Feature. Congrats to me for choosing to watch a Pixar movie. Good choice. Why not, dude? Freaking why not? Dude, yeah, Mads Mikkelsen, he, his movie won an award last night, too. I looked up the synopsis. It's called Another Round. It's about um, four friends who decide to experiment to see if their life would be better if they maintained a constant blood alcohol concentration of 0.05. Um, seems like a fun movie that I'm sure has no negative consequences as a result of that. Seems seem kind of like The Hangover, right? It, if you like The Hangover, you'll also like another round. A rip-roaring romp about middle-aged men behaving badly, with no consequences whatsoever. He looks like Hannibal too. Bro, they might as well have just called it like, you know, the Hannibals last night. What a, what a horrible joke. <laughs> just a... Just a terrible joke. And now in my head, I can't get um, the phrase out. I, I deserved it. I mean, we, we had nothing, man. We had nothing on that run whatsoever. Um, so I don't offer any apologies. Like, we should have died faster, quite frankly. Um, now I can't get the phrase out of my head. And now Hannibal Lecter steps to the lectern to give a lecture. I don't know, that should be like a, uh, that should be like an English as a second language oral exam question. Hannibal Lecter steps to the lectern to give a lecture. Okay, Eminem. Hannibal Lecter stepped to the lectern to give a lecture. You remember Mosh? Not Smosh, but the, the song Mosh by Eminem? Whatever happened to that guy? Did you know Mosh? Look, I'm not a hip-hop expert. I was reading about Mosh last night, though. I was alive when it came out. Oh, Farticus, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I was reading about Mosh last night. Um, not Mosh Potatoes, no. But did you know that Complex Magazine named it the 58th best hip-hop song of all time? Seems like I'm not the only one that doesn't know anything about hip-hop. I don't even think it's the in the top 58 Eminem songs. Go look it up! Maybe it's not... I think it's complex. Why not? Why not? Dunk, dunk. Da dunky, dunky. Dunk, dunk. Probably was not Sean Evans' decision, is my guess. That song is C tier. I mean, dude, like, you gotta remember, like, 2004 was kind of a different time. You know, Jimmy Kimmel was not interviewing uh, President George W. Bush and running his fingers through his hair and asking him about what it means to be a painter. He was instead on The Man Show at the time, drinking an enormous stein of beer and then throwing to the outro of young girls bouncing up and down on a tra uh, trampoline in bikinis. It was a different era. Mid-2000s, Eminem could make a song like Mosh. Nowadays, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if people can handle it. It's a little political. 
Uh, okay, down to the next floor. <clears throat> donk it, donk, donkey, donkey. What is awfully hot coffee pot? Anytime I reference Eminem, I, I guess I can fill in the blanks for myself, but anytime I reference Eminem, that comment shows up in chat. It's an awfully hot coffee pot. That's a real line he did? I thought it was like... I thought it was like somebody doing an impression of him. He actually says it in the... in the... in the freestyle. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's good stuff. That's, I gotta watch that. I did I did see the, the Trump diss that he made. It's from that. I don't remember. That's the oh yeah, okay. The one where it's in the it's in black and white because it's serious, yeah. I mean it was serious, but it's also seriously funny if he said that's an awfully hot coffee pot. The other thing I was reading about Mosh, I was laughing because they were like, you know, some of the reviews of the song were like, if this is the last song Eminem ever makes, then at least he went out with a bang. And I'm like, I mean, I guess in 2004, you could maybe be like, maybe this is the end of his career. But reading that in 2021 is just hilarious. You're like, what do you mean it's a, if it's the last thing Eminem ever makes? It's 17 years later, he's still making music. Aged like milk. I got nothing against Eminem, by the way. Like, you know, I I, I never had like a huge Eminem phase, uh, like a lot of people did uh, in the early 2000s. But you know, you couldn't escape lose yourself. You couldn't escape Stan. You know, he we had a an enormous cultural impact in my generation for sure. So true, bestie. Hey, but it actually is so true. But honestly, like, I didn't buy a rap album probably until I was, like, 22. <laughs> no, maybe, like, maybe, like, 16 or 17. Okay, we shouldn't have even gone in there. That's my bad. I would go over to my friend's house, and, and he would just play, um... We ain't going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere, because we're bad boys. Like, over and over. That, w that was all I needed. I would like to flap. And then get out of here. I don't know. Am I, am I stupid to think this run stands a chance right now? It doesn't seem that bad. I bought a Limp Biscuit record off a friend because I wasn't allowed to own it. I, maybe it's a generational thing, right? The idea of not being allowed to own music is so funny to me. Like, the entire concept of, like, parents in the 1970s and the 1980s being like, you're not allowed to listen to Kiss is hilarious. You're like... You're not allowed to listen to Kiss? You know that, like... Is this... Is that an X, man? No, that's an X. It... Kiss is like, sure, they, they, they paint their faces and they like, you know, stick their tongue out and stuff like that. But like, have you ever listened to their music? It's not that edgy. You know? Strutter. That's, what's wrong with Strutter? Gotta lose your mind. I don't support losing your mind in Detroit Rock City or elsewhere. It's just, it's, it's so tame by like modern standards, right? What about Love Gun? I mean, like, here's my thing, okay? So Love Gun is obviously, you know, everybody knows what he means when he says nowhere to hide, baby, nowhere to run. You pull the trigger on my dunk a dunk dunk a dunk dunk a dunk dunk Love Gun. Like, you know what he's talking about. But at the same time, when Paul McCartney says, I want to hold your hand... I'm going to take that with our other character. 
You know he's not, he doesn't really care that much about holding their hand. You don't get that much out of it, you know? He's talking about his love gun. So it's just a question of like, you know, what's so... And honestly, like, some pop songs are like... More offensive, almost, with the way that they allude to mature themes versus like... You know, in some rock songs that, or hip hop, they'll just say it. But like, I mean, the classic example, and I do want to point out, growing up in Canada, this is something that came up way before H three H three figured it out. Uh, but the before four song that says, you know, we're gonna make you come tonight over to my house, like that was. Even, you're watching that as like a 12 year old on much music and you're like, I know what he's saying. You're not getting away with anything, right? If you go down on me, I'll, oh no, if you get down on me, I'll get down on you. It's a game of give and take to make it through. We're free, we're free. I'd rather they just say it than allude to it, you know? Like, when, when Mandy Moore says, like, you know, I'm waiting for you, I'm missing you like candy. Come on, we know what she's talking about. Or what the, the Swedish songwriter who originally came up with the song was writing about in the first place. Anyway, that's... Subscribe to my podcast for more takes like this. Don't hit me. I'd say most songs in, in one way or the other. I mean, there's only really like five songs. You know, if, if you break them down into distinct and discrete themes, there's like, you know, death. Subcategory, getting old. Love and intercourse. Uh, the subgenre of songs that are uh, weird flex, but okay. You know, songs like, the, you know, I'm so cool. And that's about it. The songs about being a singer is, is another one. And I think that pretty much covers like 99% of it. Well, you know, songs about we, uh, drugs. That's it. That's the end. That covers almost every song that's ever been written. Or the songs about partying, which might factor into the drugs one. Yeah, man versus nature, man versus man, man versus self. Man versus a large fish in the ocean. Woman versus... Wo woman with a train versus the government. Man versus... A house that constantly changes its architecture on him when he's not looking. Woman and man versus man who has a genetic condition that can't stop him from time traveling. Um, man versus himself. And also he ages as he gets, uh, he gets younger as he gets older. Etc. <laughs> man versus large automobile. Woman versus curved cement wall. You know, it's just there's only like 10 different types of stories you can write. Man versus himself, but maybe he's a clone. Nobody knows. Ford versus Ferrari. That's another one. Jesse, what the hell are you talking about? Anyway, that's my thoughts on music. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. I've, I've seen enough. Um, yes, please. Yes, please. Alien vs. Predator. I forgot about that one. Um, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Can I get a water? This is a really good room, but... I don't know what to take, so I'm just gonna do that. I don't wanna swap and take the other one, because that character has no HP, and they'll die. So much for deals with the, uh... The angel. Making baby on a roll, yes sir. 
man with impressive metal claws versus man who can manipulate metal with his mind. We these tales are as old as time. Man versus 11 other men who want to convict somebody on suspect evidence. Dude, okay, but this, I think maybe we need this on the other character. Man versus food, I forgot, and man versus wild, of course. Did you know they're making um, a, a naked and afraid game on Steam? I added it to my Steam wishlist. The Discovery Channel has, uh, within the last couple of years, they added a, a game division to their media empire. I'm still waiting for the 90 Day Fiance game. Um, so they've... Oh, there's enemies here. They, uh... Oh, if you'll excuse me. I, I don't want to flip, dude. I should have flipped. I sh you know what? No, we flip now! Check this out. Okay, hold on. I had a whole point in everything, alright? This is how you swap cards. Mmm, baby. He's done it. Ooh! Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you flipping Doge coins? You little. You think you're Jordan Jordan Belfort? You little broker. Um. But the the Discovery Channel's releasing all sorts of interesting games now. It's like they're contracting, uh, like the devs on Steam who make like you know used car simulator. And um, I can't wait for them to come out. It's going to be a new golden age, man. They already made a Deadliest Catch game that apparently is horrible. What do you expect, I guess? But on top of that, um, there is uh, the Gold Rush game that came out a few years ago. But I can't wait for Naked and Afraid, man. I can't wait. <laughs> <clears throat> Who would you main in 90 Day uh, Fiance? Um, I think I would be a Sinjin main. Oh. He takes some psychic damage every time Tanya is on screen. Um, but on the flip side, his, he has the highest default charisma stat. Angela... Uh, no, I, she's not my type of character. And Fisa? Who's- uh, I'm thinking of Larissa. <laughs> they who oppose the queen will die! Her- her verbal stat is- is out of control. Anyway, that's, um, that's 90 day. <laughs> donkey, donkey, da donkey, donkey. Yeah, I don't think I've seen on, on Fisa's season. I've only seen famous clips. What else is on your wish list? It's 95 per, it, well, okay, it's my summer car. And then, like, 12 other very dubious simulator games that I, um... Just want to be emailed when they come out so I can play them on the stream. I need to shoot. Oh, saved! Your kiss is on my list. If you resist. In no, if you insist. On, dude, that was no joke. That was my number one workout song. When I was, when I was getting yoked. I would wake up. In the morning, with like that in my head, it's a, it's an incredible bop, especially like the the intro to the second chorus where they modulate it. Like normally, it goes, "If you insist on knowing my bliss, I'll tell you this." But then the second one, "If you insist on knowing my bliss, I tell you this," and you're like, "Dude, it's got the voice of an angel, man." I only smile as I lie, then I'll tell you why. Because your piss, your piss is on my lips. That's that's a Justin original. That's not mine. 
Because your piss is on my lips And my throat is not dry Okay, sorry, sorry Great song though I just, I guess I'm so sorry, YouTube There's a different culture here on Twitch, okay? If you insist on drinking my piss I'll drink your piss Sorry, sorry Much worse culture? No, I don't think so. I, li I like the culture on, on both Twitch and YouTube. I've seen the kind of stuff you guys like retweet. Don't He said piss? Ooh, I'm offended. No, you're not. I've seen the kind of horned up Yoshi like twerking on Bowser's phallus kind of stuff that you guys tweet all the time. Hey, this person with a really interesting avatar just uh, click the like button on my tweet. Let's see what they're up to. Oh, programming student at uh, University of Connecticut, huh? Tweet number two. Just Yoshi, some, for some reason, with a gaping uh, aperture getting filled by, like, uh, Birdo or something like that. And I'm like, bro, this is... Put that stuff on your LinkedIn, man. Twitter's for business. I had to pick a school. I I don't know if I should be apologizing to the University of Connecticut or or they should they're going to be thanking me, but either way. I had to pick a school. It was either that or Ryerson, and we've 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 taken some shots at Ryerson recently, so I apologize. Continue this bit. If you insist, I'll continue this bit. I'll continue this bit. If you want the bit to be continued. Sorry. By the way, no idea what we're doing, where we are, etc. Because this bit is on your lips. Because your bit, your bit, it does persist. Great, dude. So now I gotta listen to that song, though. Paul and Oates. Some absolute slappers. I gotta say, I'm kind of sick of, like, you make my dreams come true, but, like, the rest of their singles catalog especially is just, like, unbelievable. Hall and Oats, favorite cereal. Oh, dude, yeah, Halls and Oats. Green, green Halls and Honey Bunches of Oats. Delicious. You can really taste the, the menthol. Outer Touch is great. Um... Private Eyes. I like any song where, like, when you've got two singers, you get to do, um, like, the call and response in the middle of the song. Like, in the that's what I love. So, in Private Eyes. Private Eyes, they're watching you. Uh, they see your every... And then Oates holds the move. And then Hall goes, they see it! I love... Dude, that's why... I love Taking It to the Streets by uh, the Doobie Brothers. Because literally that whole song just exists for, like, Michael McDonald to do ad-libs in the middle of the chorus. I blind and I know what I'm gonna see. Taking it to the... He's taking it to the... Taking it to... No need for taking it to the... He's taking it, taking it to... The, it just, like, keeps... It's so good. Michael McDonald. Oh, don't oh, now this run's going nowhere now that I'm I'm on the Michael McDonald train. What a fool believes. Absolutely incredible song. Not a great serial though. What about Toto? Bad bad band. With worse songs. Sarah's Smile. Look, Sarah's Smile by Hall & Oates, it's, it's a good song. Don't get me wrong. It's on the Greatest Hits album for a reason. Um, it's, not, it's not my favorite. It doesn't, it doesn't ascend to the top of the pile for me, but it's a, it's a good song. I, 
Wait, you know what? Uh, Sarah's smile does do something I like. It gets like really intense before the chorus. Usually songs like they like, you know, they play it low into the chorus and then in the chorus they go for it like, you know, in Rich Girl. But um, in Sarah's smile, they get like really intense and then in the chorus they bring it down. Sarah, uh, smile, oh, won't you smile for me, girl? Oh, <laughs> jeez. Anyway, that's that's all I got. That's not even close to all I got, but it's all I feel comfortable sharing because otherwise it, it's gonna make for the worst commentary in in gaming history. Classic rock, though, man. Classic rock. I can't go for that. Another great song, but I will say, I I like the part where he goes, "I can't go for that." I could take or leave the parts where he goes, "No can do." I do love the part where he goes, uh -huh, uh -huh, do almost anything that you want me to. But I don't like the part where he goes, no can do. I think he could do better than that. Oh, man. Threaded, the, consider that needle threaded, buddy. Oh, frick. <laughs> What's your favorite Christopher Cross song? Dude, I only know Christopher Cross, not Criss Cross. There's two different bands, believe it or not. I know it's hard to believe. Great choice, not taking Hemolacria on uh, <laughs> the Ipecac character, but I only know Christopher Cross for two reasons. One is when I was uh, doing some maintenance on the house before we moved in, it would always show up, or he would always show up on... Um, like my Spotify playlist, because it would play 70s classic rock with machine learning. And the the reason that I remember him is because on the album covers, he looks like Cobalt Streak when he still had hair. Like, you can go look it up. The first time I, I saw the album cover, I was like, this guy looks a little bit like Cobalt Streak. Tinted rock, thank you. Yeah, Cobalt's he's he's temporarily bald. I think I want you know what? Let's do it like this. That's the way to play it. That's what Cobalt looked like in the 1970s. Yeah, dude, it is like look, it's like petty drama that isn't that big of a deal. It, it, I mean to me, because it doesn't affect me, I guess, but it is wild that like Cobalt did not appear in the Twitch clip of of Isaac, uh, like, repentance footage. I can't really pledge solidarity because because I was in it. But it was, it was a little messed up. Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it was done, like, purposely or anything like that, but still, I'm like... I mean, dude, like... Cobalt definitely deserves to be in the in the compilation more than I do. I mean, dude, I was in a Valheim compilation at one point. Like, I I can take one off. I only played Valheim like like three times. It's because they couldn't find a family friendly clip. <laughs> you know, there might be there might be some truth to that. Is the AHA water good? Um, I like it. I like that it comes in, in different flavors than just the traditional, like, pomplamoose, lemon, lime, lemon, lime. Um, but I, uh, everybody, when I said I was, I was eating or drinking AHA, hey, 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 hold on. We can do this. This is this is how you get yourself in the compilation, baby. This is how you get yourself in the compilation. One of these, then we come back for the other one later. Um, people were like, in in particular, uh, Funky Kong's Jorts said, "You gotta try the black cherry coffee flavor." I Google "Aha Black Cherry Coffee." First thing I see. Aha, Black Cherry Coffee from February 24th, 2021 it has been discontinued in uh, in the United States of America and Canada. But literally, it was 
it was not one person that said go try uh, black cherry coffee. Like four people in the space of two minutes were like, dude, you gotta try the black cherry coffee. It's legit one of the best sparkling water flavors. And now it's, uh, you know, now I want what I can't have. It's like that time I went to Jumbo Video with my dad. And we saw my, uh, this guy on my baseball team, his dad was coming out of the store. And then he was like, hey, you guys should get your heart set on, like, watching uh, Payback starring Mel Gibson. And then when we went into the store, we realized he was playing a prank on us because all the copies of Payback were, uh, were taken. They only had the box art. They didn't have any of the real VHS tapes. All-time classic bit. I, I choose to flip. Mango black tea is pretty good, too. You know what? I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, if I can find it. You know that this is like... It's a brief window on this world. Where we have all these sparkling water brands. Like... Within the next two years, there's going to be some consolidation. There's too many to survive right now. Every time I go to the grocery store, there's like seven brands of sparkling water that taste 96% identical to one another. And I'm like, this cannot last. Then again, I don't know, like McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's all do exist, so... Maybe, maybe it can totally last? Bro, this sucks, by the way. Um, the spiders are unfightable. Oh, and get, I mean, don't even get me started on Burger King. I have no idea how that exists. I, I, the, the Impossible Whopper notwithstanding, which I hear is actually quite good. I have, I've been to a Burger King like one time in the past seven years. And it was just because I was up early in the morning and the bus stop had a Burger King next to it. If I had a choice, and you usually do when, <laughs> when it comes to fast food, because they're in those weird like you know, parking lots that 17 uh, fast food stores find themselves right next to. What is the most fun fast food restaurant to eat in, though? Like, Pizza Hut was always cool. Those green tables with the with the pine border on them. And then, dude, I can still... F the Like, a pitcher of Pepsi. And then those, like, mottled plastic cups. For some reason, that's like... The, the Pepsi just tastes better out of those cups. I don't know how to explain it. I kind of hate this, but we're going to keep trying. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Very helpful, actually. Thank you. I'm trying to think of what else. What other restaurants fun to eat in? I'm not trying to flex, but I did occasionally accompany my parents to Red Lobster as a kid. You know, what can I say? Um, but when, if you've never eaten at Red Lobster as a child, when you finish the meal, they bring out like a treasure chest full of toys, and then you reach in there and you just grab one and pull it out. But I feel like every time I went, I always got like a weird, like wooden airplane. Where I was just like, eh. I don't have any place to fly this, you know? We're in the car for a half hour drive home, but... Licks? Oh, man. We've, we've already talked about Licks. Not not today, but in general. Licks is the, the Canadian uh, burger chain where they, they sing your order back to you. Restaurants are weird, man. Like, gimmick restaurants? I'm not saying they're all bad. Like, I've eaten at... At, uh, at Dick's in Seattle. Which is a rest... I mean, it's, I mean, now that I think about it... Actually, it's not called Dick's. It's called, like, the, the... It's a restaurant modeled after Dick's or something like that. It's called, like, the, the lunchbox, maybe? Where they're, like, rude to you? The gimmick of the restaurant is that the food is good, but the servers are mean. But the food is legitimately, like, pretty good. Um, 
But then, like, all, all the gimmick restaurants are weird to me. Like, can't your gimmick just be, like, the food is good? <laughs> There's, like, hey, the servers are rude to you. Hey, the servers sing. Um, hey, the, the restaurant isn't just a restaurant. It's a weird animatronic rainforest. There used to be a place, I'm not sure if it still exists, but there's a place that's very popular with tourists in Vancouver called the Elbow Room Cafe, and I, I believe that was their gimmick too. I guess I'll just die. Their gimmick was just that they're mean to you. Oh yeah, no, you're not wrong. The, the Heart Attack Grill, I forgot about the Heart Attack Grill with the quadruple bypass burger, where if you're over f like 35 BMI or something like that, you eat for free. And if you finish a quadruple bypass burger, then a, a, a hot nurse wheels you out to your car in a wheelchair. Sure, I guess I'll just get hit. That's okay. And of course, don't forget about the, the Wendy's gimmick. Um, a human finger in the chili. <laughs> And of course, don't forget about Wendy. Have you never noticed the the pro uh, popularity of gimmick restaurants these days? You got the Rainforest Cafe, you got the Heart Attack Grill, and of course, don't forget Wendy's, where they put a human finger in the chili. A human finger in the chili. <laughs> got a great show uh, for you tonight. Bobby Moynihan's gonna be on the show. Bobby Moynihan, musical guest, Tame Impala. Take it away, Max. Bro, we're going to die. We're gonna die. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. You know what's an underrated song? Beachcomber by Real Estate. Apropos of nothing at all. What the? Anyway, bro, this this run is actually doo doo. We stand. We stand every chance because we have bombs. We no longer have bombs. I'm doing my best. We at least... All this work and all we've done is get one uh, heart on the post-it note. No, you can't die yet because I need this. I need to get this, if you don't mind. Thank you. The rest do not have anything in them because we have Guppy's Eye, we can see. Guppy's Eye. They're what? Oh, you needed it. They see your every move. Sorry, just just get your swap ready, man. Yankee swap. Maybe, maybe. Not maybe, not maybe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hated Yankee swap, dude. Yankee swap taught me a very valuable lesson. As a, uh, uh oh. Bro, you suck. Okay, I gotta finish my story, though. Yankee Swap taught me a very valuable lesson in sixth grade. Um, it was exactly like The Office. We did a Yankee Swap for Secret Santa, and there was one present that was, like, this big, right? You can't even see because of the video frame. It was, like, like that big, right? So everybody was like, oh, I gotta get that in the Yankee Swap. Pretty smart kid in middle school managed to play the strategy right to get that amazing present in Yankee Swap. I opened it up. You know what it was? It was just a freaking huge novelty pencil. Literally worthless. You can't even write with it because it's like this big around, right? Other kids were getting like, you know, chocolates and stuff like that. You know, koosh balls and... Nerf toys, and I was getting 
novelty pencil. You can't even, couldn't even put it in my backpack on the way home. They wouldn't let me bring it on the bus because it was like a weapon. Anyway, slash marker, bad character, no salt. 